quite often investors just think about one component which is buying real estate and of course forget that real estate is just the vehicle to an overall plan of wealth creation it's just simply the ride we catch but of course if we don't have the right team and the right framework and the right plan set up we can certainly struggle to reach the end game which of course is some sort of financial freedom. Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today's show, code cracking stuff. We're going to dig into the team we need to navigate us through this thing called property investment. Quite often, investors just think about one component, which is buying real estate. And of course, forget that real estate is just the vehicle to an overall plan of wealth creation. It's just simply the ride we catch. But of course, if we don't have the right team and the right framework and the right plan set up, we can certainly struggle to reach the end game, which of course is some sort of financial freedom. So I think it's a, a good conversation piece to talk about the team we need to set up when it comes to being a property investor. And of course, there's no secret to success. It all comes down to planning the right route and having the right team on board to get you to the other side. Investing done alone is a real sharp struggle for success. If you have the right team, you can get the results. So let's talk about that. Welcome back regulars. You know the drill, play the program in double speed and all the episodes have done are lessons on real estate. So feel free to dart about. But I tell you what, hope you guys are well. I'm well. Uh, things are good in my world. But uh, I think certainly as I analyze property investment, I can tell that a lot of property investors just think about one small component of investing, and that is what their budget is and how much they can spend on a property. It's pretty much the buying part, which everyone gets excited about. And probably most of the topical conversations in real estate are quite often asset led. In other words, they're driven around this thing about, can we create wealth out of simply buying a property? And of course, there are many other plans to wealth creation. And of course, uh, I teach seven distinct plans in real estate wealth creation. And of course, when I sit down with people and hear about their world and learn about what they're trying to achieve, what I often realize is most people are just besotted with buying real estate, but actually forget about the rest of the plans. And today I want to highlight the plans you need to think about and the team you need to deliver upon those plans. So the first plan is obviously the acquisitions plan. We need to buy some real estate. And when you're buying real estate, you will need uh, all sorts of team members to help you achieve that, whether it's as simple as a lawyer, uh, looking at a contract, or whether it's a building and pest inspector looking at a deal, or whether it's actually a team of strategists and advisors giving you some concepts around real estate. Acquisition plan is critical to success. How many properties can you acquire over what period of time? and how much capital you need to deploy into the market to achieve that result. An acquisitions plan is a plan to itself. And of course, an acquisitions plan then leads on to what type of asset you're going to need to add to your portfolio at any particular time. 
what asset in what state, what diversified strategy around asset selection. And of course, a big part of my job is spent in the asset selection space. And I love talking about it as much as everyone else. You know, I've got my Forex growth plan, which helps deliver upon that asset selection dynamic. But certainly there are other plans in real estate. And of course, we need a lending plan. A lending plan is a strategic leverage plan, which is built upon non-securitized lending. It's about making sure your loan structures are independent upon each other so that you can recycle and use equity efficiently. And a lending plan is absolutely critical to building wealth. Quite often wealth stagnates based on lending. You know, real estate investment is just a game of properties on the other side of this glue called lending. So for a lot of investors, they just don't ever formulate a lending plan. They don't know how equity can work. They don't know how to maximize their equity. They don't know how to recycle their equity. And so they get stuck in a basically one property portfolio. And a lot of Australians today simply just have one property in their portfolio. Um, A lending plan will allow you to create more than one property in your portfolio. And of course, uh, that concept requires a brilliant broker to get you to the other side. And of course, there are other plans, uh, a rental growth plan. Now, this is generally run through yourself and your property management team. Uh, A rental growth plan is built around great management and cash flow strategies. So again, a large reason why people don't hold real estate long enough is they don't have a very good relationship with a property management team to help deliver rental return growth and holding expertise on real estate, whether it's tips on getting your property uh, a better uh, rental return, whether it's understanding rent gap theory, whether it's understanding, um, you know, what is holding your property back from a cosmetic point of view, your property management plan is critical. And again, uh, too many people buy real estate site unseen or don't really know much about the interstate location they've bought at. And that's where it's critical you form a long-term relationship with a property manager. You know, a property manager will see a property more than typically an investor will during the lifetime of the investment. Think about that. Like how many times have you actually seen one of your properties that you own? Then think about how many times your property manager has actually seen the property that you may own. They will see it more than you. And so they do become your eyes and ears on the ground and can give you some live data on what to do next with your investment. And of course, uh, we need a tax minimization plan. And of course, uh, for a lot of people who accumulate assets, they also need to think about financial inefficiencies they need to remove from their world. And you guys have heard me talk about my four-quadrant investment selection System, capital preservation, capital growth, rental growth, and also tax effectiveness. And of course, if you don't eliminate your tax through the investment journey of acquiring assets, you do miss a big component of being a property investor. Uh, Quite often, it's just simpler to hold real estate when you can create with it a tax minimization strategy. And that's the the beautiful thing about Australian real estate is it also helps people not only build wealth through asset selection and holding real estate, 
but ultimately through tax minimization strategies that are connected to property investment. And uh, within my seven wealth plans, you do need a debt reduction plan. And a debt reduction plan is really where a lot of property investors, again, have thought about the start, but haven't actually correlated the end of property investment as they've grown older. And this is where a transition to retirement plan ultimately helps people become debt free. A debt reduction plan is critical to property investment, whether it's selling assets, whether it's uh, diversifying money into superannuation, whether it's lowering debt on your principal place of residence. Debt reduction is a critical component of property investment and it's over, often overlooked as a vehicle with property investment. And I see too many people take on too much leverage and don't really have a plan on how to eliminate leverage and really don't workshop leverage or debt reduction through their investment journey. So they leverage to the eyeballs and go through their property investment journey continuously over leveraged to the point where they can't reduce debt. And uh, that in itself requires a little bit of commercial reality and also sensible planning. And of course, uh, financial planning, a plan that helps asset protection, insurances, retirement activation, all of that is connected as well to our uh, our property investment strategy. Property investment is not about buying a property. Just to be really, really clear about that. That is a fun part of the journey, but property investment is linked to uh, a lot more than just buying an investment property. And of course, um, a plan is also needed for wealth acceleration. Uh, wealth acceleration is when you cannot leverage more and you're perhaps going through a debt reduction period of your, your investment journey, but you've got lazy equity or lazy cash that you can put to work to transition yourself into a income producing state. And quite often we take equity and we liquefy it and we turn it into cash flow. It's really the idea of a wealth acceleration plan. It's really, really simple. It's about investing cash and getting a fast rate of return. How do you do that? Well, there's Again, a plan needed for that dynamic. And so as we can see, investment is a bit of a journey and each component of our life is different. And so we need a different plan as we travel through our investment journey. Now, if you think about it, it's 2024 if you were to uh, end up in 16 years time retired, it would be year 2040. So it's not too far away. And of course, 16 years is a nice number to go, how do I increase the value of real estate over a 16 year period and decrease my debt over a 16 year period? How do I take equity? I might have $200,000, $400,000 in equity and end up in a place where today you invest that $200,000, $400,000 worth of equity from potentially assets you already have, say your own home, which is worth $1.2, $1.4, and end up where you have, say, circa an extra $2 million worth of assets ultimately paid off producing $100,000, $200,000 in income. 
That's a big question. And for a lot of people, they just forget to work, work on an entire plan. They just work on the buying part. And again, this is where most investors fall down. And uh, I guess why most people don't end up being successful property investors, perhaps just own one property or end up in a place where they own real estate for a very, very short period of time, a very speculative period of time, is they don't have an acquisition plan, they don't have a lending plan, nor a rental growth plan, nor a tax minimization plan. They do not carry with them a plan for debt reduction or an overarching financial plan and don't have a vehicle to transition to retirement whereby they can use the money they've created along their way for a further wealth acceleration. And uh, I guess when I look into why people struggle with this concept, it's for a start, people don't know what they don't know. And I think that's called unconscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know. Um, and really, you know, the purpose of listening to this podcast, the purpose of listening to other property experts, other financial experts talk on real estate is to become uh, conscious about what next. And again, uh, too many people are conscious about having these type of plans, but they realize there's just a lot of hard work behind doing something like that. There's a lot of uh, anxiety that often is created. Once you do know, you become consciously incompetent. And I would say when I sit down with a lot of people, they are conscious about this stuff, but get really, really scared. And, and really, because they get scared, they are actually being incompetent. Uh, they are not looking after their financial future self. And again, um, I think for a lot of people that are financially incompetent, obviously, they don't work on this stuff because of the effort behind it. They either have a lack of trust with, um, you know, like assembling a team. Quite often they are overconfident in what they believe. They just believe that it's all going to work out. And as you get older, you start to panic because a lot of this stuff is not set up. And I think for a lot of people, the other real anxiety part is they just get overloaded. Like the fact that property investment is not just buying a property, it's a lot for a lot of people. And they tend to uh, back out of really uh, going the distance when it comes to property investment because all of this stuff. They don't reduce their tax, they don't uh, pay off debt and they sort of put themselves in a position where they're not going to win. But uh, I think uh, if we can put ourselves in a space where this is all set up and we're competent, um, you can do this stuff without overthinking it and we call that unconscious competence. This is the state we want to get to when it comes to property investment. So there's all, all this sort of perceived complexity. And the other thing I think which holds people back is sometimes, well, most of the time, financial advice costs money. Uh, advice costs money. And when you think about how many people end up on the pension with nothing, that probably look back on their life and go, I wish I paid for advice. And I say this all the time, you know, the worst thing you can do is to take free advice because it's known as non-consequential advice. Free advice is the worst advice. It usually comes from your friends and your family and, you know, the guy at the, the pub 
it's bad advice because there's absolutely nothing writing on someone giving you their thoughts. Uh, the best advice is paid advice because there's consequences to paid advice. There's so many consequences to, for example, financial advice that today a lot of people do not want to be a fan financial advisor because uh, it's so governed that it's almost um, – you know, impossible to, you know, like people struggle to, to want that career because of the consequences. So I think it's really important to understand, you know, good advice matters and good advice will help you with your personal income, your real estate income, your superannuation income, uh, your principal place of residence and other investments. Good advice creates a 12-month goal. It creates a point of starting. It pre creates a point of keep doing and a point of stop doing uh, and actually living. And for a lot of people actually that I meet, they don't need more real estate. They don't need to buy more real estate. They need better financial planning or better tax minimization strategies. Quite often people have the right amount of real estate. They just don't have the other ingredients to get where they need to go. Their rents are completely out of whack. Their income strategy is completely off track. So we need a team. Now, if you think about who ends up going to the Olympics, they typically have a team. They have a team that help them get there, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, the best coach in uh, the, the country, whether it's, uh, whether it's the best sports scientist, whether it's the Australian Institute of Sport. You don't go to the Olympics because you're – uh, you know, because of, of luck, right? For the most part, you need to build a team to get you to the Olympic Games to be on that starters block. And it's the same with any professional sport, whether it's the AFL, the NRL, the amount of effort behind the scenes to get those players on the field every single weekend is absolutely incredible. There's all sorts of people keeping those high-level sportsmen intact. And it's no different, in my opinion, for a property investor. You are the sportsman. You need your uh, scientists. You need your physiotherapists. You need your team to get you to the finish line. And the finish line is a marathon. It is not a sprint. The finish line can be 30 years away for a lot of people. And along the way, there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be bruises. There's going to be times where you struggle to hold on to your assets because of high interest rates. There's going to be times which are scary because of financial meltdowns. There's going to be times where political interference plays a part. And the beautiful thing is if you've got your warriors of wealth behind you, you can absolutely navigate to the other side. And so I think there are kind of nine warriors of wealth that you need when it comes to delivering seven plans for yourself in your life journey, for your life story. The first one we've talked about, a financial plan, a financial advisor um, who delivers a financial plan. Um, and for most people, they just don't end up getting a financial advisor because of the cost. That's the reality of it. And a financial advisor is not $1,000. So, uh, but they help with really long-term financial goals and strategies and legacy planning for you as a investor. Uh, they manage risk, they diversify investments, and they ensure 
financial security. They're an important part of the puzzle. Now, I'm not a financial planner, but I certainly send our clientele if they would like financial advice, and we always recommend they do, to financial planners. Uh, financial planners tend to charge $20,000, dollars $30,000, and then all of a sudden, a lot of people go, well, I'm not paying that. Uh, and again, the, the problem with that is very short-term thinking. And it's usually about some sort of money kind of fear. When people go to a financial planner, it's usually the actual payment anxiety, which really, really trips people up. So just factor that in. You don't need to do it when you're first starting out, but at some point during your journey from start to finish, it's going to absolutely play a part of your world. The second worry of wealth is your accountant. Accountant can obviously help with tax strategies, uh, financial statements, can keep you uh, in a position to borrow money. Um, accountants are an important part of the puzzle. And again, accountants can also help with things like PAYG, tax variations, so you've got more cash flow coming in. Uh, your accounting profile, your accounting plan, your tax minimization plan is an important part of the puzzle. And again, if you're going to be an investor, you may as well also eliminate your personal tax as best as you can. Uh, that is the beauty of being an Australian property investment. Now, not every property is going to help you eliminate your personal tax. But again, if you can play that game, you can not only uh, build a property portfolio, but you can use property to help your taxable income situation. So we need a financial advisor. We need an accountant. We also need a mortgage broker. And as we build wealth, we can also end up in a place where we have a private banker. Mortgage brokers and private bankers are ultimately great weapons of wealth. The right mortgage broker can really set you up to do all sorts of actual stuff from debt reduction to releasing equity to playing the game. You know, quite often to be a successful property investor, you might need five valuations from five different lenders from releasing equity from your home. You might need uh, different lenders that have different servicing calculators to help you borrow money. You know, by way of example, you know, sometimes when we use servicing calculators on uh, on everybody, different loan amounts pop out. You know, one lender will lend you 400, one lender will lend you 700. The type of real estate you're going to get at $700,000 is going to be a lot superior than that of $400,000. Uh, I don't even know if you can still buy things for $400,000. I certainly would be well below uh, the average of what people are spending on real estate. So you've got to sort of question what that can look like. Um, so mortgage brokers, they're, they're key or private bankers. Private bankers, as you build wealth, tend to come knocking when you start to acquire four, five, six, seven million dollars worth of assets. They're very interested in working with you. And again, just simplify how your world can look and help you become very sophisticated and play at the investment Olympics. And of course, I think as well, you need good relationships with real estate agents where you own your real estate, including sales and property management. I have some brilliant property managers across the country. Um, and I also form relationships with salespeople in those property management offices. Not because I want to sell, but I like to keep abreast of what's trending 
and how I can improve my real estate's value. You know, I'm working with one realtor at the moment. He's great. He doesn't want anything from me. He's just there to serve. Um, he knows in 10 years, if I decide to sell, I'm going to call him. Uh, gives me great advice around uh, how to, uh, what is happening in the market in real life terms. And then I interpretate that advice and see what I can do to improve my asset. And property managers, again, like we want this rental growth outcome. Too many people shirk on property management. I was saying this yonks ago. I mean, think about how many like low cost budget airlines have gone broke of recent times and how many low cost budget property managers have gone broke. Everyone thought I was crazy, like, like pay people well and you'll get a result. And I've just seen so many purple bricks come along and all of these people come to a conclusion that you should pay a property manager nothing. And, and ultimately, I've seen the scars and the lashes on the back from just choosing the wrong property management team. A team that does not have a vested interest in your wealth creation. What kind of happens in property management departments is they serve as a foundation for the sales team to sell the real estate. So uh, basically property management department, you know, might charge a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars for the year to look after your property, to see it more than you, to um, keep keep your property safe. Um, and really what's happening is they're just doing that so the sales team can call you and scare you as an investor into selling. And I've seen this happen over and over in a market downturn where um, the property manager's role is to really upsell you to a salesperson to sell the asset from underneath you. And they'll say anything. They'll, they'll come up with any spin on the marketplace. I've had this so many times where I've literally had clients ring me and going, there's an oversupply in certain uh, suburbs or the suburb they own real estate in. And I'm like, where did you get this information? Oh, the local agent, he told me, uh, you know, there's going to be thousands and thousands of properties coming to this suburb. And I'm like, where, where, where is the information from other than his opinion? And they could not pro produce anything to support this real estate agent's opinion. The real estate agent was just simply bullshitting the investor to sell the real estate. And again, the reason you want a good property management team and say, resales team is to hold real estate, to hold real estate to the day you want to sell when it's your decision you're not being pressured into it. And again, good real estate agents out there, there's a lot of lousy ones, but there's really good people in some of these businesses that really want to help you and will tell you not to sell. That's, that's the type of relationship you want. And of course, a property manager delivers your cash flow plan. We want property managers who are aggressive, pushing rents, getting rents up as best as they can. They can't make the market, but they can certainly put their stamp of their excellence over what they do. So we want financial advisors, accountants, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, and property managers. We also want a good solicitor on our team, someone who can handle all of those legal aspects and trans actions we want to do when we're building wealth and even reselling our real estate. We want someone to protect us when we're buying real estate and even signing loan documents. We want an absolute uh, property-based person. Now, a lot of the time people use conveyances. Again, conveyances can be good, but they can also uh, not have well, they don't provide legal advice. And again, it's a, it's a difference between the two worlds. 
Obviously, we want a property investment strategist. And I think um, the right investment strategist helps you develop the right investment strategy and uh, helps you make sure you've got a really balanced portfolio. Your investment strategist advisor should be able to help motivate you to your end game. And again, if you've got a good advisor and strategist combo, you're just going to do, they are an absolute must when it comes to your weapons of wealth, uh, when it comes to your worries of wealth. And really, you need a great investment agent slash buyer's agent, a property investment agent, someone who can help choose good assets Uh, help identify opportunities in the market, give you a call when an opportunity comes up that's too good to refuse, Uh, a great property investment agent or a great property investment buyer's agent will will always have you in the back of the mind for, you know, what, uh, you know, what property can be, turn a strategy into a commercial reality. Um, And that's the beautiful thing about a property investment agent. They will look at your strategy, your advice, and go find you something that mirrors what that looks like. And again, the reason I highlight, you know, your nine warriors of wealth is you want good advice, you want a strategy, you want a tactic to get there. And then ultimately, you've got to go and implement, manage, and coordinate all of that. So that is a real, uh, a real lot of work for people. And real estate investment, as I say, is a lot of work. It's it's actually identifying that you've got a team member to help streamline your work, so you actually pop out the other side financially free. If you don't have all of those plans, you really need to think about actually more than just the buying part of real estate. Start to develop those seven plans, your acquisition plan, debt reduction plan, lending plan, financial plan, uh, wealth acceleration and tax minimization plans, and of course, a plan to hold your real estate through property management. All right, guys, that's it from me. I'll catch you as we talk more real estate next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode with the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.